guys, welcome back to another edition of Somo Gear Lasers, and today we are taking a look at the Ingall from Somo Gear. Now, we've got some night vision footage to kind of show you how everything works and looks, and we're going to take a look at that here in a minute. But first, we just want to do a tabletop study of what the Ingall actually looks like, how it feels, do a comparison to the PEC-15, and let you know my thoughts between the two build qualities. Because after all, we do know that the PEC-15 had some QC issues, some mounting issues, and we want to see that this has been resolved. So right off the bat, what I want to show you guys is the actual mounting hardware that's located on the bottom. Now, with the Somo Gear PEC-15, we know that that bottom bar that is your actual recoil lug or your pick rail was basically only held in by two screws and true to form this one looks like it's got those two screws as well but from the bottom end so it's actually drilled directly into the aluminum we see that we've got some epoxy holes here which is covering up the end of those screws so you can't easily take it off now the other side is we have molded aluminum here that is for the receiving side of it and the bar does go all the way into here so that it's mounted in multiple spots. So here, here, and here. So that just leaves this spot to see how it actually interacts. So of course, we have the pieces here in hand and let's take a little look at them. Now, of course, you've got your flathead lug to be able to hand height, it's knurled. And then we're gonna wanna torque that down a little bit. We've got a very flimsy but it's okay washer. That's just to make sure that if we do over tighten it, we can always get it back out. And then this is the part that I want to kind of focus on. The actual bar that locks onto the side of your pick rail has two little kind of standoffs that come off the very bottom. These are gonna be a very important thing to pay attention to when you're mounting your ingall because if you have this misaligned even the slightest, it's going to go on at an angle. It won't torque down all the way. And as a result, you're not gonna be able to get something that's holding zero or you're gonna have issues with it wobbling. And we'll show a little bit of video what that looks like whenever you have it mounted and you think it's tight. So pay attention to that, that's important, but it is a good design. And I'm pretty confident that it's going to last even under torquing and basically abuse. So we're gonna go ahead and get this refitted on. So we'll take our actual and that's, we're gonna make sure that slides into place and you see that it goes into the grooves. And let me just show you where those do sit. In case we didn't get a good look at it yet, you can see that you've got two holes that are the receiving side of that. So that is where those two little standoffs are gonna directly go into. So whenever we set this down, it goes in, locks into place. We've got our little crush washer here. That's just gonna go over. And then of course we've got our actual nut that kind of bolts it down and now we're back in business so when we're mounting this onto our pick rail and this is just a, a handguard that I kind of grabbed to kind of showcase to you guys we still want to make sure that we've pushed it forward we want to make sure that the recoil lugs on this side on this side for the standoffs are in place and we'll go ahead and get it hand tight now that it's hand tight we'll do a little check and since those recoil lugs are perfectly in place, we already see that there is absolutely no play, no wobble at all. And it's barely tightened on, like I barely touched it. With this, what I have liked to do is we are using a wheeler torque grip set. And right now we are approximately at 40 inch pounds. So we're gonna go ahead and want to lock it in. Okay, and then once we've basically had our torque come off. We are now at 40 inch pounds and guys, this thing is absolutely rock solid. It is not going anywhere. It is going to hold zero. And just so that y'all don't freak out, yes, it is completely normal for it to not sit perfectly centered. In fact, you're gonna see that it has a gap just below the illuminator. And that of course is just normal because of how it's mounted. So if you see that on yours, don't worry, it is rock solid. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how that compares and contrasts, of course, to our Somo Gear PEC-15 and why that mounting design was so, well, in my opinion, flawed. So looking at the PEC-15 here, we can see that, yep, everything looks pretty clean correct. It's made out of this nylon plastic, but my God, is that disgusting. And yes, that is the result of having to JB weld this thing multiple times after the recoil lug essentially came right off due to the design of how this is done. So you have a very small interface on that, but the main way this actually holds under recoil is two little holes that are drilled out, and then the bottom of the recoil lug 
that actually holds all the magic is essentially two very small aluminum screws that stand out just a hair that are gonna lock and hold it into place so that when you push this set screw in and further, further, further crimp down, all of a sudden you've got pressure that's torquing it into place against this plastic material. So whenever we're getting this ready, we'll back it out just a little bit here and it will snap in there since we've again JB welded the mess out of this thing multiple times. You see how that reacts? And then as you cinch it down, it's gonna hit those holes that we had to reform. Make sure our recoil lug is pretty good. Now off a gun, this isn't gonna hold at all. It's just gonna keep falling off. But once I put it onto a rail, it actually holds fairly well. And just to note guys, I think this was due to a pick rail that I was using was actually out of spec. It was a little bit too thick and a little bit too wide. And so when I torqued this down, just the 50% pass. So you go to hand tight. Once you're at hand tight, you stop, grab a quarter is what I usually use. And you go one full half turn past that when it's under pressure and you're locked in. Unfortunately, because this was going onto a rail that was out of spec, I believe that's what ultimately led to the initial crack that stripped the bottom. So with my other PEC 15 from Soma Gear, I haven't had any issues and I haven't had any loss of zero. You can check out the other reviews if you really wanna know more. Now, my main issues with the PEC 15 was the fact that I would lose, or not lose, I would have illuminator issues because it just, it did not, go nearly as wide as I'd like to see it. In fact, the illuminator is quite tight. And this is a uh, 20 milliwatt laser illuminator on this. So it is quite bright. Now, again, we're gonna go ahead and get this seated and we're just gonna go ahead, hand tight this down. We're gonna see if this holds on camera because it's kind of hard to do this. Uh, usually do this on the workbench directly with a weighted gun, so it's a little bit easier to do. So we've gone ahead and tightened it down. Right now it's just finger tight and it is mounted, but of course, if I were to whack this pretty good, I almost assure, it will assure you it will fall off. So looking here at how it's mounted, we can already see that it's not quite perfectly aligned. Uh, it is on there. But you just have to be real careful with these pecs. They just, they don't seem, in fact, the issue with this one is probably that the actual pick rail is just out of specification on the actual mount itself, not the gun. This is a very decent Griffin armament handguard that I've had zero issues with on anything else. So I think if anything is faulting right now, we're back at the Somo gear for being just a little bit out of spec. So nevertheless, we're kind of going back through it. All right, and now we're on there. Again, kind of check all angles. And from how I can tell, it looks fairly okay. So what we're gonna do at this point, since it's hand tight, is we're gonna go ahead and give it a half screw over. And now, yep, now we are in business. And you saw that this was the JB Weld at one. This was no Tom Fuller. You can actually still see the JB Weld on there. This is just, that is how you have to get this thing mounted. If you mount these correctly, they're going to hold up and not shift. And then your only real issue is gonna be the actual springs inside that control the zero. Sometimes those springs will wear out and you'll lose zero. Sometimes the springs will wear out in here and you're gonna end up losing the co-illumination co or the slaved zero that you're ultimately looking for. All right, guys, so let's get back to the Ingall now and see just what we're dealing with when it comes to design and functionality and some of the things that you need to know. So when we look at our laser, it's gonna be coming out that bottom left side here. So when we activate it, we'll see the laser comes on, everything's good. And if we go and switch over on the top controls, we have aiming high, we have aiming low. It's a very heavy click. It's not too heavy, not too light. Right now we're in the off position. Now we're on the aiming low, but on the IR side. And then we go one more, we're on dual low, which is gonna be your illuminator and your laser. We are on our, so now we go to aiming high and we are on our aiming high IR laser. And then if we go all the way over again, we're on our IH, which is going to be just the illuminator on high. 
And then if we go one more again, now we're on DH, which is our dual illuminator and laser on high power. Now you will have set screws that are located here and here that are going to prevent you from going all the way into high power whenever you get the device, but you just remove those with the included Allen screws and that will kind of activate that for you. On the back side here, we've got our LA3 plug, which is traditional for the Ingal. It's not a crane plug, so you will not be able to use your mod switch accessories or your Unity accessories that have the crane on there. It does have to be in this particular one for the NGAL. We've got our illumination knob, which is going to be how we adjust very quickly, I might add, the spread of the tightness or the spread for our illuminator. I absolutely love that. It's true to an end goal and it works fantastic. It is a little bit loose, but I haven't found that I accidentally bump it because when you're doing that, it's, it still takes a little bit of effort to be able to make that knob move. On the back, we have the traditional kind of Somo Gearish battery cap that stores one CR2, CR123 battery, and it's supposed to get some pretty good bite life out of that. We've got two different sets of zeroings. One, two, this is for your elevation, this is for your windage. That controls your IR and your vis laser, which are, again, they're slave to each other, so you just zero your aiming laser on your vis, and then your IR will follow suit. Again, elevation and windage, and this is to zero your illuminator. What that does is it allows you to center your laser directly in the middle of your illuminator, and you're, again, good to go. Now, that was one big complaint that I had with the PEC-15, of course, was that when you changed the overall flood pattern of your illuminator, you lost your zero, and now your laser was going to be bottom right, bottom left, upper right, upper left, all over the place. So that was a big negative that the Somo Gear PEC-15 had, but it seems to have been pretty well resolved with the Ingall version because once you zeroed it, uh, it doesn't matter when you start going up down on the illumination for the flood, all of a sudden you're still zeroed and there's no change or effect. So pretty confident that this thing is going to hold zero just fine. The body is completely made out of aluminum and it is painted. It has that nice distressed look, but again, some QC concerns. Uh, maybe this was me during some of my testing, but the paint does chip off and expose that aluminum quite easily. So, you know, you might get yours and you might see some scratches or some variation to the paint. Don't let that bother you too bad. It's pretty normal. One last thing to mention, um, aside from the actual activation on the top, which is, it's nice and clicky. Yep, you hear that? Nice and clicky. Uh, is the covers. Now, the covers, of course, are just to make sure that you don't accidentally blind yourself. So when we're looking at them, they are completely blank. They're just darkened so that they look like lenses. But these will actually fit the official L3 Ingall neutral density filters that basically are like a little piece of glass that are going to bring down the brightness level. Uh, or if you want to use the pattern generators, if you're actually doing mil spec or mil sim and you need pattern generators to be able to differentiate from your laser indicators versus your teammates laser indicators, these are compatible with all the NG NGAL or the Ingall accessories from L3, albeit you're going to pay more for the pattern generators and the neutral density filters probably than you paid for the entire device. Now, of course, I didn't put the stickers on here because I just prefer it without the stickers, but you can even buy the official Ingall stickers to put on this if you want to go for that clone correctness. So that's really the first look, but let's see and discuss how it functions now in reality out in the wild. All right, guys, welcome to the night vision part. We're going to take a look at the end goal now through my eyes with the Anvis 9 and a recorder from Unobtainium Gear for mission recording. Right now, we're just doing on full power, the UHP mode, which is high, dual, laser, and illuminator. And right off the bat, we can see that the illuminator is super clean, nice, big. I do get some bloom out of the center laser, but I've come to expect that with a lot of these Chinese full power clones. Now we're running at full power laser only. And again, we get that lightsaber beam coming out that we've grown to love. Switch it down to dual low. And we see that the illuminator looks pretty clean as well. And the laser is still pretty bright. And again, this is just laser on low. And you can kind of still make a beam out, which makes me think it's not exactly eye safe. So be warned. Uh, so let's go and do some dr live firing, and we see that it actually performs admirably under recoil. We don't get any loss of our laser cutting in and out. And all in all, I'm pretty impressed that we didn't see the same issues that we've previously had with the PEC-15. 
So looking at our pattern to try to show you what we're looking at here, we see that on the far right target that was just getting our basic zeroing down top left is when we finally confirmed our zero. This is at 25 yards. We expected it to be a little bit low. And then we look to our left target where we have the two is those last three shots. And then the other shots are center mass where we see again, pretty low about one inch low, just like in comparison to our Viz laser. So I consider that to be pretty well co-aligned. Now, putting things through perspective, looking through our optic, we see that our dot actually lines up pretty well, running with the dual illuminator and laser, and we only see one aiming point when we're looking through our optic, and this is with the IR mode. Now, again, this is how we zeroed it with our Viz laser, so I'm pretty happy to see that these are very well aligned with each other. Going ahead and switching to the additional laser mode, we're gonna look through it one more time on high. Now we've got our nice big bright beam, and we can see that again, even though this thing is a laser pointer, we look through our optic and it is just perfectly aligned that we just have to even kind of look away to make sure, oh, yep, it's there. And we've got that visible line going right to a red dot. Gotta love it, guys. Now the illuminator is what I'm most impressed with. We have a nice big spread. We tighten it down, we get a good punch. That's our 18 by about 20 barn out there that we saw. And then that's our deer feeder, very standard size. And you can see that it's about 50 yards away from where we're at. And it does a really good job of illuminating it. So for hunting purposes, I think it's actually pretty great. Now going to a comparison of a commercially available laser, this is the Streamlight TLR VIR2. And we can see that while you have to have the light on for the laser to be on as well, don't like that functionality, uh, we do see that the laser is, well, fairly dim. But it's still very usable, so I don't consider it too gimped. But in comparison, here is the PEC-15, and we're running it on dual, uh, dual high in this video, so we can kind of see the spread. And now we're about as wide as it gets, which is still pretty good compared to the original PEC-15 from Soma Gear. But now when we look at the end goal on high, on its widest spread, we can see that it covers that entire tree where the PEC-15 struggled to even cover just a portion of it. Now, when we do match them in our spread size, we notice they're pretty similar. So it leads me to believe that the actual power output from both the Ingall and the PEC-15 are fairly similar, meaning they're both around 20 milliwatt power, even though the website listed differently. Now, looking at the low mode on the Ingall, we can tell the difference immediately between the VIR2 and the Ingall, whereas the Ingall is not eye safe, in my opinion. Uh, it blooms, it has a laser line, it's just, it is a much brighter laser, and you can easily tell which one was the Ingall on the left versus the Streamlight that is on the right. Moving forward though, if we look at the PEC-15 on low aiming laser, we can actually kind of not tell the difference anymore. So the VIR2, again, it's a civilian based laser, you buy it on the open market, and it's just, they look almost identical, which leads me to indicate that the PEC-15 on low aiming laser for IR is eye safe, which is kind of a good thing, especially if you're running airsoft matches and you've got a 12 year old pointing one of these directly at your night vision. So, and lastly, we're looking here at the Ingall on low aiming laser versus the PEC-15. And man, you can just tell it is not eye safe guys. Lots of bloom, very bright, even has a laser beam. So be careful when you're out there using these things. It is not necessarily going to be eye safe rated. So guys, that is my first look and my review of the Somo Gear Ingall. I did buy this myself. This is not a paid review. I absolutely love this thing. But if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section below.